All right, so one of the first out-of-state elk tags I ever drew was in the state of Arizona, and that was in 2005, and since that time I've applied for elk in Arizona every year. And Arizona is an incredible state and definitely worth looking at if you're looking at a non-resident out-of-state elk tag option. Now, Randy Newberg and I did an Elk Talk podcast. Uh, it's episode 16 where we broke down the entire state of Arizona draw process, tag allocation, uh, tons of information on bonus points, draws, the process, the procedure, all of that. What I want to talk about today is my personal strategy for applying for an elk tag in the state of Arizona and how I research which states or which units within the state uh, to apply for. So before I get in and actually apply, I'm going to walk through what I do to figure out what unit to apply for in the state of Arizona. And you know that I'm a member of Go Hunt Insider and I love the power that it gives me to research individual units in every state that I want to apply for an elk tag in. So if I'm a member, I go to Insider Basecamp. It brings me here, kind of the home page for Insider members. And on this page, one of the things that I like to start with is the application strategy article. And so Go Hunt provides an application strategy article for just about every Western state, every species, every year. And if I look at the application strategy for Arizona elk, there is so much information in here and anything I could ever want to know about the application process, about the state, about the drought in the state, about tag allocations, everything is right here in that application strategy article. So a couple things that really stand out, anything that's new, they're going to show you there for the year. They're going to give you important information about the state, about the deadlines, uh, about the tag fees. Cool thing about Arizona is Arizona has big bulls and it's known for quality. They manage for quality, but unlike other states that manage for quality, Arizona has kept their non-resident license and tag fee fairly low. Uh, you'll notice here we've got Nevada, Montana, uh, Utah, Wyoming, New Mexico. All of those are more expensive than Arizona. So Arizona's tag fee is $665. You're going to get information about the current status of the drought in Arizona, the draw system, understanding it, what you can do to get points, extra points. You can get a loyalty point if you apply for five years in a row. That's an extra bonus point that doesn't leave as long as you keep applying. You can take Hunter's education in the state of Arizona and get a lifetime point that never leaves you. All that's available here. One of the cool things is Go Hunt provides a hit list for each state, and it's kind of the trophy units that, if you're looking for a big bull, they break it down, they give you the trophy potential, the bull to cow ratio, the percentage of public land, and the harvest percentage. So, good place to start if your goal is to shoot a monster bull. For me, the thing I like is I can go down and find the hidden gem units. And these are the elk units that have a greater than 50% draw odd at just five points, which in Arizona, five points doesn't get you much. And most people who are kind of stuck on the unit one, unit 10, unit nine, unit 27, unit 23, the premier unit wagon, they kind of forget about the fact that you can still draw good tags in Arizona with fewer points. So this portion of the application uh, strategy article is super valuable to me because I can find units that will give me potential of 320, 340, 380 plus bulls with bull to cow ratios of 36, 37, 39, 40 bulls per 100 cows. Harvest success rates, listen to this, harvest success rates on late archery hunts of 77%. And my odds at drawing those hunts with five points are all 60% or greater with over half of them being guaranteed 100%. So I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna look at some of those hunts and some of those units to see if they'll meet kind of the criteria that I have and the goals that I have for my hunt. From there, you can find information about which units produce the most Boone and Crockett typicals and non-typicals, if that's important to you. You can see uh, which units have the best bull to cow ratios, as well as how many people in the draw have more points than you. 
they break down all the non-residents by points. So for me specifically, I have 11 points as a non-resident in the state of Arizona. There's 721 of us that'll be in the draw this year, potentially, or maybe some of them will be buying a bonus point. So I can get all that information. I can manage my expectations. If I have zero points, what can I expect? If I have three or four points, what can I expect? If I have nine or 10 points, what can I expect? And then what can I expect with 15 or 20 elk points? So tons of information there in the strategy article. Once I read through that and get really excited and take a couple notes on potential units and hunts to look at, I jump into, I'll click on, I'll go back to the base camp for insider and click on the state of Arizona. And it's going to show me all the hunting units in the state. I'm going to select elk as my species. And it's going to show me all of the units that I can potentially hunt elk in. And over here in filtering 2.0, I can set all of my criteria to be able to show me which units meet that criteria. But before I get there, odds have just been updated for the state of Arizona. And if I'm looking at elk odds for a non-resident, I'm gonna go in here and let's say I have seven points. I'm gonna enter seven and it's going to highlight the seven point column and give me my draw odds for every unit in the state. Now, if I wanted to break that down by archery and say, I just want to see the early archery and late archery opportunities, it's going to give me those. And it's now gotten rid of all of the rifle opportunities. So if I wanted to say right now, it's set at 0% draw odds. So it's going to show me every unit that I could apply for with seven points. But if I wanted to say, I want to have a chance of drawing these units, maybe a 10% draw odd, I can select that, move the slider to 10, and there are going to be six units where I have a chance of drawing with seven points for the early archery, the rut archery hunt, and there's gonna be several units for the late archery that I can draw. Now let's just see if there's any that are 100% draw with seven points. And as we would expect, they're all late archery hunts, and there are six of those hunts that are guaranteed with seven points. And then if we wanted to look and see which ones are probably the most desired and uh, sought after hunts, we can see that this top one, unit 6A, has a 32% chance of drawing with six points, where all of the other hunts are 100%. So that tells me 6A is probably going to be the most sought after, not necessarily the best, but might be the first one that I start with. So I'm gonna click on it. It's gonna show me the trends for the last four years. It's gonna show me bull to cow ratio, trophy potential, and a few other uh, pieces of information there. From there, if I'm really interested in unit 6A, I'm gonna go back to the one with the map and I can click on unit 6A and now I can slide down and find tons of detailed information about unit 6A. And within all that information, as I get down here, I can actually see my odds of drawing each of these hunts. So at say seven points, and a non-resident, I'll calculate the odds. And as I drop down to the early archery hunt, I have a 50% draw odd at seven points of drawing that. And next year with eight points, I would have 100%. If I wanted to look at muzzleloader, same thing. I have a 50% chance of drawing that muzzleloader tag in unit 6A. And if I wanted to take it into late archery, at seven points, there were no applications, but eight points was 100% guaranteed and I was 36% uh, likely to draw that with four points. So at seven points, it would be pretty much a guarantee uh, for the late archery, 50% for the early archery. So gives me a good idea there of one of the units that stands out from the draw odds section. Going back to the draw odds, I can look at other units, unit seven west late, unit nine late. Unit nine is an incredible unit. And it's interesting to me that I can draw that tag, the late archery tag, with seven points, 100% guaranteed. And as I look down the scale here, it's actually guaranteed with five points. And I have a 26% chance of drawing unit nine late archery with uh, just four points. So again, clicking in there, you can see the trend. It used to be, you know, with four points, it was 14% draw odds. You weren't guaranteed in 2016 until you had seven points. 
and now you're guaranteed with five. So that tells me fewer people have been applying, maybe the quality's gone down. The bull to cow ratio is listed at 65 to 100. Trophy potential is 380 plus. And if I wanna really get detailed information about unit nine's late archery hunt, I go back to my filtering 2.0. I select unit nine and I dial down there to information and put in my seven points. And I'll see that with seven points, the early archery tag, I have a 0.3% chance of drawing. So that's pretty much no chance at all. If I wanted to edit that and put in 17 points and recalculate, I still have a 0.7% chance of drawing unit nine rut hunt with a bow. Those are pretty slim odds for 17 points. 19 points, I have a 14% chance and I'm guaranteed at 20 points. So unit nine takes 20 points to draw the rut archery tag in Arizona. Out of my league, I don't have a chance for that. But if I look down here to the late archery hunt, the November hunt for archery, I'm 100% guaranteed at 17. So I wanna go back up and edit that and show my example with seven points. So for this unit, you'll see my seven points, 100% guaranteed of drawing that late archery tag. And looking back, I'm 34% chance of drawing with just five points. Now, looking for more information on that, you'd probably think, well, unit nine, late archery, probably low success rates, maybe a lot of the elk move out of the unit uh, during November. But if I go up and look at the harvest success rates, we're looking at 47% success in a late archery hunt last year, all the way up to 64%. The lowest year, 17% which most over-the-counter archery hunts during the rut are around 10%. So unit nine in Arizona, incredible big bulls. We're talking 380 plus potential with success rates, sometimes up at 50% and a tag that can be drawn with five points, six points. So lots of potential, lots of hidden gems. If you're willing to hunt a late archery hunt, you can hunt Arizona every two or three years, some of those late archery hunts. For me specifically, I want to take a look at where I'm at based on my points. I personally have 11 points going into this year's draw. So if I'm looking at 11 points and guaranteed to draw at 100%, there's actually several early archery hunts. It looks like probably 12 of them or so here. And there are just as many late archery hunts. So I definitely have lots of options if I want to be guaranteed to draw a tag in Arizona this year. The power of looking at Go Hunt's draw odds is super helpful because I'm gonna be able to tell if a unit I wanna hunt is on my list to be guaranteed this year and it helps me plan my hunts throughout the year. So I don't see anything on this list of guaranteed tags I could draw with 11 points this year that I wanna spend my points on. So now I have to look at tags that I could potentially draw with 11 points, but not be guaranteed. And to do that, I like going to filtering 2.0 and I'll go over here. I'm a non-resident. I'm going to put the trophy potential at 300 plus because honestly in Arizona, any unit's got potential for big bulls. And if I know that my trophy potential is 300 plus, if I hunt hard, I'm probably going to be able to find mature bulls. I'm going to change my point level to 11. And you'll see that I still have all of these options pretty much. That's because I have my minimum draw odds set at zero. So I have a 0% chance of drawing every elk unit in Arizona. If I wanna increase that and go up to 10%, you'll notice a couple of them drop off. Now I still have all of the seasons selected, so I need to turn off everything but early archery. And I just wanna see what's available to me at 11 points in an early archery hunt. And you can see there's approximately eight or 10 units here that I could draw with my 11 points at a 10% draw odd or better. As I start increasing the, the draw odds, units are gonna start dropping off. And if I look at what I have 50% chance of drawing versus 20%, you'll notice it doesn't change. So that tells me I'm kind of in an area with 11 points that it's not gonna change uh, units necessarily. If I want a better unit, I'm gonna to have to have more points or 
I'm going to have to settle for a very low draw odds. Even then, it doesn't add a whole lot of quality units at 5% draw odds with 11 points. If I wanted to look at unit 10, for instance, with my 11 points as a non-resident, I'm pretty sure I know the answer for the early archery. Not very good odds. In fact, even with 15 points, I only have a 1.2% chance of drawing. So if I wanted to hunt unit 10, that's really the unit I wanted to hunt. I could see how many points it's going to take. And I can see at 18 points last year, it was 100% guaranteed. I'm at 11. So I've got seven years to go. And in the next seven years, there's a good chance that that's going to creep up into the mid-20s. So realistically, I have no chance of using my points to draw unit 10. But in Arizona, half of the tags are reserved for the bonus pool, which means everyone has a chance and it's weighted by the number of points you have. So I could apply for unit 10 and have a chance, but my chances are super, super low. If we look at other hunts, muzzleloader, I'd be guaranteed with 15. I'd have a 30 or a 50% chance at 13 points. And then late archery is about the same as muzzleloader, guaranteed at 15 points, 43% chance at 14 points. So I could realistically have a chance of drawing unit 10 in the next five years for late archery or muzzleloader. But if I'm interested only in a rut archery hunt, which for me specifically, that's what, uh, that's what I'm going for, and I want a 50% chance or better of drawing that tag, and I am looking at early archery only, those are my options for this year. Again, if I wanted to expand a little bit and look through the list of tags or the list of units that I could draw a tag in the next three or four years, I can do that with filtering as well. So once I narrow down which units I can potentially draw with 11 points at my desired draw odd level, I can go over and, and look at them and I can also see a breakdown of each unit in this column. And as I scroll down, I can see bull to cow ratios, I can see harvest percentage, I can see success rates and percentage of public land, trophy potential, all of that, which is really just absolutely powerful to help me narrow down which unit to apply for based on my specific uh, status in the draw based on my points. So for instance, unit 22 is showing a 42 to 100 bull to cow ratio, 100% uh, guaranteed to draw that, uh, early archery, the harvest success is 78%, 64 applicants, all of this information. Now I can go and look at unit 22 and say that might be a unit I want to apply for. Or it might say, you know, there might be something in there that makes me realize there's a reason why people aren't applying for that unit and I'm really not interested in applying for it. Anyway, hope that gives you a, a good look at how I use Go Hunts Insider Membership to break down each state by unit and find the unit that meets my criteria that I can draw based on the number of points I have, or it'll help me gauge and get a good idea for how long it's going to take to draw that unit so I can plan ahead. Arizona is one of my long-term strategies. I have 11 points. I'm willing to wait another three or four years if I have to, to draw an archery rut hunt. But I'm going to definitely apply, swing for the moon, and if I get lucky and draw one of those tags in the bonus round, then I'll be making plans to spend my last two weeks of September in Arizona. If you're interested in signing up for a Go Hunt Insider membership, you can go to gohunt.com forward slash elk 101, and they have a landing page set up there where you can sign up and receive a $50 gift card to the Elk 101 store. And on the Elk 101 store, you're going to be able to purchase any of your elk hunting gear that you need, elk calls, game bags, camouflage boots, you name it, it's in there. And just by going to gohunt.com forward slash elk 101, Go Hunt will send you a $50 gift card to the elk 101 store. Once you're a member, you're going to see just how incredibly powerful that membership is to help you research and find the tags that you want to apply for, not only in the state of Arizona, but in every western elk hunting state. Check out the notes below, the link is there, and we'll be back with Utah coming up very soon and my application strategy for the state of Utah for obtaining an elk tag.